Hey guys, it's Drew with the Gucci Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking to Christian from Treasure Town a little bit about his life and about um, how his kind of role is in the numismatic space. In case you and I are going to spend a few moments asking him questions, just because he's someone you don't meet every day, someone that's very interesting. And a lot of your viewers probably ask you is, what's What's kind of your purpose? What's kind of your reason and main goal for making numismatic content? Definitely. So again, thank you for having me and yeah, great to be filming a bunch together. Uh, you know, I think a lot of the content will be coming out on both of our channels for a while. And I think that, you know, when we think about content, um, I think it, the f first reason I started creating videos is I felt like there wasn't a ton of it on YouTube. And I think I've been pretty honest with people that, and now I'm doing a little bit more dealing, but I've been more of a collector at heart and just somebody who's really excited about coins. You know, I started collecting uh, as a way to connect sort of with my dad and grandpa. You right. know, we were doing very low value coins, but having a lot of fun with it. And I think that, you know, A, seeing that and, and seeing the possibility for what coin collecting can be for people can mean so much to them um, just from, uh, you know, having fun and connecting with other people and appreciating some of our world's art and history and then you also get into things like understanding concepts of value or for a lot of people it becomes a career and uh, those also really motivate me to encourage people and at this point you know having done it for about five years you hear stories of you know dealers who are doing way more volume than I am who when they were younger they would enjoy watching some of my content and then now still tune in when maybe I'm doing a podcast with another you know person in in coins maybe like this or um, maybe you know a, a higher up person who's very well known in the world of numismatics so that's sort of probably my big goal and I think you know from a business perspective for me too at this point which it sort of morphed into you know it's a lot of outreach and people who can you know be customers or be people who you work with to curate their collection or provide advice to so it's been a great thing for me that's awesome yeah the main reason why we start making content too is because of that you know there's just a giant opportunity in the space to um, you know there's just a big opportunity to teach people and understand a little bit about what they like to collect and also give them and impart a little bit of our knowledge. Um, Casey, what kind of question did you have for him? Well, this is somewhat of a follow-up to uh, the first question that we just asked him. Um, when you go to start something, this journey, this YouTube journey, you have these expectations, right? I want to be here by this point. Uh, what were some of those uh, first goals that you had? Yeah, I think when I really started, I was a junior, maybe going into my junior year or senior year of high school, uh, and I really had no idea what I wanted to do with the channel. It was actually going into junior year, but I knew I had enjoyed watching a few other people produce YouTube content, and I thought, hey, I could do it too, and it could just be a fun thing to put up. You know, I didn't, you know, People probably know that I'm monetized. I run ads on my channel. I didn't do that until I had about 10,000 subscribers. I just hadn't really thought of it as much as being something of a business perspective. It was more like, hey, it's, it's just something cool. I like sharing information and people seem to like it and you never know what it could turn into. So uh, it was something, you know, not only figuring out coins, but also figuring out something like YouTube appealed to me just in the sense that it was a new challenge. Uh, and then obviously at this point, it's way more than I ever thought it would come close to. And I have other you know goals for the future that are maybe a little bit different from when I started out doing it, but it's something that I work very hard at and want to continue doing for uh, as far as the you know future goes. Yeah, so it's kind of started out as a passion and then it morphed into something that is a, something that gets you up in the morning and makes you excited still and also you know, funds a little bit of your life and what you want to do. Um, what what do you normally like collect? Do you collect any type of coins or bullion? What what do you normally like to collect? Yeah, so I think that that's a good point distinguishing between the coins and bullion because I always think it's sort of from my perspective it hasn't actually done great, but I do like gold. I'm a little more weighted towards gold mm -hmm. versus silver. Um, but then when you handle a fair amount of coins, the other thing is I'll just collect individual cool coins. And I'm not the best, you know, I would give advice to people, you probably want to be very narrow in your focus. And maybe it's because of the role that I'm in creating content, I sort of have to have, you know, a, a little bit of knowledge in every field to produce right. stuff on. But 
I'll do anything from a cool ancient or medieval coin with some nice history behind it um, to you know a, a silver bar to you know just a nice Morgan dollar with some toning that has some character to it. So I think at this point I'll try to pull out things that are uh, specifically interesting. That also <laughs> includes errors varieties. Now I'm basically just saying everything you could collect within coins. Right. You know, I've got my Dansko 7070 typeset and a issuing entity typeset, which is like one coin from every, you know, it could be all the countries that are, uh, you know, in the world or, you know, that might be at the United Nations, but then that'll also include like small German provinces that were each, uh, you know, issuing their own co coins and money during the World War One period, the not guild. So, you know, it, it really ranges. And I try to, you know, a lot of that is not collected with the goal of having an increase in value. It's more just like really cool coins that I think are fun to be aware of the history of. Yeah, I think the main reason why we collect and something that like you were talking about is the is the history behind the coin and also the story that in which you acquired it. I think that there's just a lot of rich value in that. Maybe you bought a coin when you were out on a vacation or you bought a coin from us and it was during you know this filming session or something. So that's just something that's you know, if, if you find a coin, make sure it has a nice story with it because that ultimately is going to be the reason why you might keep a coin. Now, uh, what did you have to ask, Casey? So you you're going to college, you're you're doing this YouTube thing, and then you're getting into a lot of um, coin dealing. It seems like you have a very exciting and uh, flourishing future. Um, where do you see yourself as a person in the next five years? Oh, no, that's very uh, kind uh, words, but I think, yeah, it's, it's something that I'm really figuring out because I actually don't have a super clear vision for what I'll be doing in five years because there's, you know, there's different post-college business opportunities. I haven't 100% made a commitment to doing coins versus doing, you know, it could be something like finance or it could be something, a mix of the two, or it could be something totally different that I'm led to. So I think what I do know that I'll be doing in five years is c continuing to be very involved, uh, at least semi-professionally within coins, continuing on the YouTube side uh, and continuing on the like building the community and sharing uh, what has been a really, really meaningful hobby to me with as many people as I can, sort of trying to create. I think one point, and this could be its own whole other video, is like sometimes you have to go build. You know, it's not like I'm trying to often service a niche of like, this is how we're coin collecting or like, here's a, a very clear and demonstrated need within collecting. It's like you sort of have to go um, drum up the excitement and show that it can be fun and show that something can work really well and then you go have to build it yourself. So I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but I'm sort of trying to build that community on YouTube as we speak. So Yeah, it's kind of a nothing is built overnight also. It's like if you uh, have a passion for something or you really enjoy it, and like something like what Christian would do, is he would make videos about it and make open up the conversation and dialogue and that ends up being very fruitful for him but also for people that really had no one to ever talk to about you know typesets or uh, collecting Morgan dollars and so that's a, a very interesting thing um, so uh, is it kind of difficult uh, I guess my question would be is it kind of difficult to manage YouTube and to manage your business type of things with um, college because I know that you're doing an internship with Heritage now how has that all been kind of scheduled out and figured out yeah no I think it's definitely a good reminder that often you have to be very disciplined in a lot of what you do so I, I right. spend a lot and I get the sense you know talking with you that you're pretty meticulous in terms of planning things in just a way it's it's great it's but it's like if you have some big goals often you're going to need to put in the effort to make sure that that happens. It's not just gonna come because, you know, you decide to do one thing one day and another thing the next. So, you know, for me, a lot of it is, some of the coin topics do not need to have a video made the day before when I release it. So I'll film stuff, I'll be, you know, like what we're doing today, actually. Okay. I'll probably uh, release some of this in the next week and then I'll release others of it, you know, in two months from now and that way I can, you know, have a longer tail, not jam everything. You know, we make a certain type of content and then I'll also make a bunch of videos on, you know, varieties on certain state quarters. And, you know, those aren't going to change as much. Whereas, you know, a market update is going to have to come out within a month or so, or right. maybe two weeks of filming. So I think it's just like putting a lot of planning in and I do a lot of strategic review of where I'm at. And I think it sounds like you do some similar stuff with yours. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of something that's good to plan out um, in advance, I think what Christian's saying is because 
there's sometimes I like I was on, I did an interview with him I think a year ago and uh, we ended up he ended up uploading it a month or two after just because of all the stuff that he ended up planning out and when it's a lot easier when you plan things out in terms of uploads but also where you want to go what you want to do with your coin collecting uh, kind of habits because then you're once those videos or once what you have is all set up, you can go and do and live life sometimes when you need to, or you can go to college and do, uh, you know, your schoolwork. So, uh, what did what did you have to ask, him, Casey? As you know, technology and every industry has been affected by the past few years. In your opinion, how has the numismatic space evolved? since you've started creating content. I know that you've been creating content for a while, so it may be difficult to put in one sentence, but what are your thoughts? Definitely, no, I think it's a, I'll do my best to answer it. I think very candidly, you know, and I wouldn't even say I'm an expert about everything in terms of how the numismatic field is today. Um, certainly it was not five years ago, or it was just less so, but I think there's a few trends that maybe I could speak to. So I think the first is that there is a lot more uh, social media content being created. And I think that one important thing with social media content, I think it's a big reason of why you guys have had so much success quickly is that there's authentic content really speaks to people. So if it's not, you know, we obviously did some questions before and when I do an interview with you, you know, on my channel, I'll jot down some questions, but things flow pretty naturally. And I wasn't sure of what the questions exactly would be, uh, you know, before we were talking today. And I think that just, you know, getting in front of some coins with people who know about them and just asking them, you know, it's, it's just like you're having a conversation with somebody like this is over a dinner table, except it's in, you know, this format or same thing when I ask you about, you know, film some videos yesterday, asking about some of the highlights of your personal yeah. collection. It's like that really comes across to people. And it's not like a super scripted out thing. So I think that the trend is for more of that, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, something like Witter Coin University coming onto the scene. I think that also, you know, it's smart for the coin world and industry to be uh, having an eye towards the dealing aspect because having a healthy dealer economy is uh, critical for servicing the needs of collectors and also, you know, maintaining something like pricing, which I think just you can't say that collecting, you know, doesn't get a benefit from people who have the value mindset. It also allows dealers to profit and collectors, you know, if they have the right eye and, you know, I whole debate, I'm sure we'll do a video sometime investing versus collecting, but, you know, there, that is important. So I think those are some of the basic trends in terms of maybe a little more servicing of the younger crowd, um, I think, and a lot more sort of buzz and community being built online in a much less official way, which I think can feel way more authentic as opposed to everything going through really structured programs um, that may leave out a lot of sort of the genuine human right. love of collecting. Um, yeah, and, and to kind of put a point on the evolution of coins, I think that, um, you know, people used to just go to a coin show and that's all they could see and that's all they were offered. Um, some people traveled very far to do that. Um, and then TV guys came on the scene and they started selling coins for crazy markups. And then now there's this kind of freedom of media where you can upload something for free. You can buy a very minimal amount of equipment and then you can make authentic content about coins that are reasonably priced, coins that have information that we can share. And that I feel is a great um, thing that has evolved the coin community. Um, but I think the coin community, like he was talking about earlier, is that it's been a little bit slower than most other niches on YouTube or on different platforms because, you know, people used to watch TV, you know, 10 years ago. But YouTube really has evolved since the 2000s and people have really clung to that and they don't want to watch TV anymore. It's the same thing with, you know, you don't want to watch, uh, you may not be able to go to the show this weekend, you may not be able to spend money on the television, which you shouldn't. Um, so you might watch 15 minutes of my video or Christian's video. And then that would end up being something that makes it worthwhile for you. Definitely. And, and even to follow up, it's like there's different types of content. Like I love watching a lot of your coin stories because it's really stuff I maybe haven't thought to see. Same thing on my channel, do some world stuff. And then everybody watches world that wants to. And it's not like you just have to turn on the TV and you hope that, you know, they're talking about your specific interest. You can really <laughs> dig down into specific types of things you're interested in within a, a broader spectrum that you're also uh, curious about exactly you can pick the content that you want to put in front of yourself and, and listen 
Um, did you just, have something to ask me, Keith? Just, just to add to that, uh, I think it may be difficult for YouTube content to really catch off in relation to other topics and themes within YouTube is because of the demographics that we're serving. I mean, it's going to be your standard 55 to 75 year old individual. That's at least what our demographics are. So you are going to see some, I don't know, some slower adoption. I think that um, technology is a, is a big step for some people and um, giving over some of their information to subscribe is also a concern as well. Um, and going back to the evolution of the coin space, I think when we go to put everything somewhat in a digital setting and people are able to go to my website and your website and John Doe's website, they're able to compare and see, okay, I don't know, it's somewhat of an accountability system. If I want to compare light coins amongst websites, I can see, okay, well, John Doe is selling it for significantly higher than Christian is or vice versa. It's just, I don't know, it, it keeps... More of a free market that... Yeah. Yeah, it's a free market that runs the table on pricing, right? So it's kind of like if someone, if I go to someone that sells coins and they want 25% over retail value, and then you go to my website or Christian's website, and that coin is priced 5% under retail value about where auctions are, that freedom of marketplace is now opened up so people don't get taken advantage of, but also they uh, get a coin that they like that they might have a little bit of an upside for themselves. Now this question for you, Christian, is a bit a bit off of the script. Now this doesn't necessarily pertain to coins. What would what would you say, or who would you say is a major role model in your life? It doesn't necessarily have to be in coins. Generally in life, I would say. Wow, that's that's a great question. It's something I'm always proud to say. For me, it'd probably be my dad. So I think that's probably the case for a lot of people. But uh, you know. We have talked about coins, but that's really not the reason, um, you know, just in terms of being very loving, sort of, you know, leading our family and, you know, his love of Christ as well, I think is important and something I look up to in a big way and, you know, his love of the family and care for that. You know, I think that's been a just a wonderful thing in, in my life and something that I would want to emulate, um, you know, in my own down the road. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if he'll watch this video. He definitely may. So. Yeah, just to, to thank him for everything that he's just done, but also the person he is. That would be a big, um, you know, the immediate answer that comes to mind in that case. Yeah, there's a lot of people that talk about an inheritance, and I think that a solid role model that has taught you right from wrong and has directed you the best they can, because we are humans, is uh, an inheritance that, I mean, you can't quantify and it'll set you apart from many of your peers, which you can't thank your parents and your role models enough. For sure. Well, thank you for uh, sitting down with us, Christian, today and uh, talking a little bit about your life and, and what you enjoy. And uh, we look forward to making more videos with you and hanging out some more. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And yeah, always a blast. Yeah.